What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 124 of the Road to Glory here with FC United of Manchester and today we have the League Cup final but first things first if you did miss last episode go check it out as always um, in fact there were two episodes uploaded yesterday so maybe you caught one and not the other maybe you were just out yesterday and you just missed it but yeah two episodes I think they were like a total of 50 minutes as well so I definitely recommend checking them out uh, today we have the League Cup final uh, later on tonight I will have another episode of this up for you guys uh, which will be the second leg of the Champions League tie but today, as I mentioned, and I will save her about the third time in the first minute of the video, it's the League Cup final. Um, we have had a lot of fixtures, and just so you can see this, I'm not going to cover these fixtures because you guys have seen them all. Uh, but we've not had a break in terms of fixtures in a while. We've been playing kind of every other week. Oh, blimey, since mid-January. It's been about a month in the last... how many days? In the last month we've played nine games so there really hasn't been that many breaks and as a result for this in the squad is struggling and particularly with the um, FA Cup fifth round which I'd like to do well in and the Champions League tie coming up um, I am using this game as an opportunity maybe to rotate the squad slightly and by slightly I mean kind of a lot <laughs> um, but no um, yeah just mixing things up uh, really um, I guess trying to play a squad that I think is going to win the game but at the same time hopefully um, you know uh, can kind of rely on players who perhaps aren't so key to the side so looking at the starting lineup for this game you can see here the amount of games they've played in terms of the midfield and attack it's very much a team that hasn't had too much football under its belt but all these players as you can see when I have called upon them especially the ones in the final third Lee Wright, uh, Felix Zuccolini and Carl Klaus have all performed it's also a great opportunity for some of these younger players to really have a I guess a run out today and play well uh, we are playing against Southampton, whose top goal scorer we actually nabbed off them in January, uh, Jean-Philippe Pereira. This guy uh, we nabbed from Southampton. He was their top goal scorer. They've been struggling since he left, if I do remember correctly. We can check here. Fixtures. Yeah, you can see here they've really struggled since mid-January. I think it was about there, that Stoke game, where they lost him. So they've been really struggling without him. So I'm very hopeful that today... Uh, I guess against Southampton we can give a good performance uh, fairly strong side but as I said yeah rotate some names uh, our bench is absolutely stacked so if worse comes to worse we do have options here but this just seemed like a really good opportunity to rotate the squad give a few of these younger strikers a run out today and see how we get on so we are going with our standard formation in goal Pavlenko uh, a back three consisting of Gauthier, Rosales and Tango Horn. Pretty much a full strength centre back set up. Uh, a left back we go with Diego, just giving uh, Luke Shaw a rest. Uh, right back, Nazarov, uh, kind of standard, the vice captain, been a staple of our team for a long time. A defensive midfield, we go with Daniel Ramirez, the 20-year-old uh, 20 centre defensive mid. This guy actually came in last season for 3.2 million from um, Argentina. Really good player. I want to get him playing first team football. This is a great opportunity for him to do so. At right centre mid, we go with Carlinhos. He's not had the best start to his FC United and Manchester career since he came in on a free from Internacional. Uh, but this is a great time for him to redeem himself, of course. He got sent off on his debut, but I'm hoping that uh, he can give a good performance here and really be a rock in the centre of the park. And then up front, we go with Lee Wright, England international, who has been struggling a little of late. Um... As you can see here, he's really been on the decline, which is a shame. And then up front we go with Carl Klaus, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. This guy, certainly uh, what I believe to be the future of the club in terms of the final third, could be a world-class striker. And then alongside him we go with Felix Zuccolini, who is just absolutely insane. 19 finishing at the age of 19 really says a lot about this guy. Amazing off the ball, amazing determination, just solid everywhere, this midfielder. Came in last season for quite a hefty fee. Uh, in fact, the start of this season for quite a hefty fee. I actually sorted out that deal in about a year ago, around this month so that's why it came out last season or oh, sorry at the start of this season but the transfer had been planned beforehand but anyway yeah let's get straight into today's game we are playing against Southampton as I've already said we have their key player uh, there's a few familiar names who may well be making appearances for Southampton here uh, namely Shane Barney so we'll have a look and see who's actually playing for them they have got Shane Barney of course they have Shane Barney up front uh, hopefully he will not come back to bite me this game 
But no, we'll see how we get on. Obviously, Wembley, this is the last domestic competition that I'm yet to win with FC United of Manchester. So it'd be interesting to see if we can maybe, uh, I guess, win it today. It would mean that we've won the League Cup, the FA Cup, the World Club Championship, the UEFA Cup, the Champions League, the World Club Championships, the European Super Cup, the Champions, uh, sorry, Community Shield and the Premier League. We would have won them all, which would be an amazing achievement. This is actually our first final in the League Cup, uh, so hopefully we can give a good performance here and get the trophy and take it home for us. But it is going to be a tricky tie uh, against Southampton, so yeah, we'll see how we get on uh, here. Uh, nil nil. Looking at the stats early on, Southampton getting a little bit of the ball, but first chance looks like it might be coming our way. Shepherd here. Is he going to get booked for Southampton? He is. And a set piece here on a dangerous looking position for FC United to Manchester. Carlinhos hits the crossbar. No one there for the rebound. Disappointing stuff. But looking at possession, we are all over them now. Uh, 15 minutes in, six shots already and 61% possession. And another set piece here. Ball in the box. Scorfia, the captain, hits the woodwork again. Wow. Uh, really unlucky here. Maybe we can make a chance from the second corner. We cannot, and that is disappointing. I'm a little bit worried that Carlinhos might get sent off. Of course, he got sent off on his debut in this competition. Um, so that, I'm just hoping he can keep his head in this game and make sure he doesn't get sent off sillily. Uh, but anyway, th th we're doing well here. Um, you're performing well, keep it up and the result will come. And then just go tell the defence that um, I'm looking for them to make the difference. Looking at it, team's really motivated, really happy. Um, hopefully that will have a good bearing on how we play this game. And hopefully we can just keep up our match plan at the moment. May be tempted and slightly inclined to throw on some of the big guns come maybe the 70th minute if we've still not managed to break the deadlock. Um, looking at it, um, not bad performances by anyone, but we, we've not scored yet and... That alone leaves me a little worried. So I'm going to bring on Alfred Serra for Zuccolini. And I'm also going to bring on Wanatabe for Carlinhos uh, in the central midfield department. And see if they can make a difference for us with 20 minutes left on the clock. Don't want to use my third substitution yet. Potentially extra time on the way. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I can't afford to risk it. But looking at it, 90 minutes and there's a late chance here. Nazarov, get the ball in the box. They're not going to hit us on the counter. Surely not. Don't do it, FM. Don't do it, FM. If they hit us on the break, I'll cry. Oh, go on, Diego. Go on. Carl Clouds is in the centre. Let's get the 19-year-old to break the deadlock. Sarah. Sarah comes on off the bench and scores. What an inspired sub. SC and I, Manchester, take a deserved lead. Great goal there. Just chucked on Sarah. I know he's capable of scoring when it matters, and he's done that just then from the bench. Exactly what we needed, and that will be the cup in the bag, unless something very strange is going to happen here. Indeed, nothing strange happening. Southampton players all fall down on the floor. That was amazing. That was a great performance. Um, Lee Wright getting man of the match. In truth, it wasn't the best game ever. We continue our unbeaten run in all, run in all competitions to 41 games, which is pretty incredible. Um, yeah, great performance. What can I say? That is amazing. Um, it's what we needed result-wise. Late goal. I I'm not complaining, though. I'll certainly <laughs> take a late goal if it means that we're going to win it. Uh, we've won the treble now of the League Cup, European Super Cup and World Club Championship. Potentially, we could go on and win and load more competitions this season. Um, just the general kind of messages you get after winning stuff. Sam Ashton has had words of encouragement for the Red Rebels boss to work the space. Um, no, but good stuff. Um, good, 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 good results. We qualify for the Europa League through that, although in truth you'd hope that we can go on to do more. Uh, apparently we were punished by a controversial goal. Apparently there was a fill, foul in the build-up. I think that must have been Diego slide tackle. I'm not going to complain. Um... Yeah, apparently we hit the well. We did hit the woodwork a lot of times. So there's no apparently about it, but no, we did get the result. Um, that's good. Looking at match confidence, um, fans are delighted at the amount of chances we've won, and also the fact that we did win. In terms of competition happiness, you can see here, um, board are very happy with everything that's going on, particularly in the league. The fact that we're on course to win the title, also the fact we won the. Um, club world championships and then looking at the overall thing pretty standard here but you can see uh, very much approved by the board in terms of my position um, transfers they're fairly happy with a few that they're 
upset about, particularly the the departure of Glenn Stewart. It's a sad day for football when Glenn Stewart had to leave, but he did have to go. He's had a good season actually for in the Prem for them, uh, for Wolves. So I'm quite happy to see him do well there. Um, but no, uh, good good stuff on that front. Uh, next episode, as I've mentioned at the start of the video, will be the Champions League uh, tie. Uh, against the second, it will be the second leg against Bayern Munich. That'll be coming up shortly. Uh, in the meantime, I have got the game against Arsenal and the FA Cup replay, so we'll find out uh, next episode, I guess, if or oh, how I guess we got on in that result. Uh, that's really good uh, for us. That uh, the fact that we're still in that. Uh, really impressed by the team. Just a little bit of a club overview. I've not shown this in a while, but you can see here we're still at Gig Lane. It's about another 14 months until our stadium is set for completion. You can see here we still ground share with Berry. Uh, facilities are fairly solid. People have asked Jack, why haven't you been upgrading these? Um, I have been upgrading these, that's the thing. Um, facilities, literally, we didn't have any to begin with on this save. And so there's only so quickly that you can kind of bump up and improve your facilities. And um, yeah, I, I've continued to improve them, but I've had to prioritise other stuff over them. But we're, we're up to good trading facilities now, which is okay. Youth facilities aren't great, but then I do a lot of regen poaching anyway. Uh, you can look at the legends and icons and favourite personnel here if you want to have a look yourself. But a few familiar faces here, particularly legends, myself, Glenn Stewart. In terms of um, icons, you've got Alfredo Senior, Shane Barney. Uh, Peyrard and Adani. Is Adani still a free agent? He wants to be a director of football. Wow, he retired from football at the age of 31. Can I get him a job? I kind of feel like I owe it to him to give get a club legend a job if I can. Um, we'll, we'll offer him a job as a, as a fitness staff member, even though he doesn't want to be it. I just want him at the club. No, nope, I'm sorry, mate. I can't do it. Oh, sad times. He doesn't want to come. He wants to be. A, he's determined to be a director of football, even though he's crap at it. What a shame! Um, but no, you can see here looking really solid for us. Just a quick look at my manager profile as well. I suppose you can see here, um, kind of my, uh, I guess, attributes. Although I never really look at these too much, but you can see them here. Fairly solid everywhere. Uh, in terms of media handling, I don't do press conferences for the most part, so that's why that's so low. Hands on approach. Now, there was, I think it was in the very first season, I holidayed a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean maybe a month. I think it was like 42 days. And my hands on approach is not perfect, which is a little bit annoying considering that if I go to, is it overview? Yeah, overview. 0.95% of my time has been spent on holiday, 54 days on holiday. And so. Um, to have not perfect, uh, I guess, hands-on approach is a little bit annoying. Uh, but you can see, yeah, looking at the overall stats and stuff, we've almost spent, well, we have spent over 5,000 days, I suppose, at the club. One job, 15 awards to one, number of players bought 192, number of players sold 79. You can see the total value bought and sold here. Record transfers. Overall record, uh, we've scored 1,350 goals, conceded 869, win ratio of 52% in terms of actual domestic success, 8 cup wins, 4 league wins, 6 promotions, uh, pretty impressive stuff overall, uh, total games won 422, drawn 182 and lost 202, which is a pretty impressive record if I might say so myself, um, there's loads of achievements here, I mean look at it, look how small this like bar is. Um, yeah, it, it goes back a long way, <laughs> right to the beginning. Um, when you look at some of these players, it's kind of funny. Kieran Kenlock, first player I ever signed. Oh dear, look how bad he is. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's it's quite nice. It's like the nostalgic look back at kind of stuff that I've done at the club. Here's a history of our success and our league positions. Um, what can I say? Pretty pretty impressive record, uh, particularly last few seasons, obviously we've dominated it. You can have a look at my biography here if you really want to have a look at it. Um, first venture into management, under his guidance, lifted... Oh, I can't be bothered to read all this. Essentially, we've done a lot. In terms of awards one, I will just run through this. Uh, Blue Square Bet, North Player, uh, Manager of the Season either even uh, shortlisted for blue square bet premier manager of the year when league one manager of the year empower championship of the month english premier league manager of the month on four occasions english premier manager of the year on three occasions it's a pretty impressive record if i might say so myself 
Um, but yeah, that, I think that's everything really in terms of my profile and achievements and stuff without kind of scrolling through everything. Um, I still need to work out how I'm going to kind of tie up loose ends in this save. It's like people always ask me when I was doing the save, when is the save going to be over? What's the overall aim? And I always said the aim was to be better than Manchester United, which realistically to win the amount of trophies they've won and stuff is not going to happen. Um, I guess in terms of the squad, I, I'd consider if we win the league this year that winning the Premier League three years in a row would be enough for me to kind of look at this save and go, right, I did what I wanted to achieve there. I dethroned Manchester United and Manchester City as the dominant Manchester clubs in England. And especially with the new stadium being granted, it's kind of, it's tricky deciding when to end a save. And it's always a decision. I mean, when I say end, I mean, obviously, stop uploading it. I've got the Gambra Saka save. Uh, hopefully going to get a few more episodes of that up over the next few days. Um... I mean, FM 2014 is, what, two weeks away? Um, this save has been amazing to me, and people have already asked this, and I am going to confirm it now. I will revisit this save from time to time, maybe once a season, just a random video will pop up covering this. Um, because it's a save that I will go back to, maybe not initially when FM 2014 comes out, but I'm sure there will be times when I return to this save, just for nostalgia, maybe upload the occasional video on it. Uh, but all in all, it's, it's just, it's a tricky one, like when to call it a day. And I have been thinking about it, and I think this season, depending on the level of success we get, I can kind of look at it and go, yeah, we had a good run there. Uh, I mean, realistically, I did mention overthrowing um, Alex Ferguson in the Hall of Fame. To get 4,300 points or score, we're going to have to win a hell of a lot of stuff. I mean... Three domestic divisions, two domestic cups, and three other trophies. Um, I got a long way to go to get 17. Um, I mean, realistically, if we get into the top 20, I think that would be a pretty incredible achievement. I think people have to also remember the fact that, um, obviously, I started right at the bottom. It's not like I started at Aberdeen and then went immediately to United. I've, I really have worked from the bottom on this save. In terms of best national managers, we're not far off in England. That is something that could happen, uh, I think, at the end of the season. And then continentally, we're, again, we're not far off the pace in terms of being one of the best managers in the continent. But still a little way to go, I suppose. Uh, and then for our nationality, third best English manager of all time behind Bob Paisley and Brian Clough. Um, I can't argue with that, really. Um, there's a, I mean, to surpass some of the play, uh, managers behind me as well. Uh, it's pretty incredible but yeah it's a case of when when do you call a game a day when do you decide that's the end of a save and I need to work that out but I think this season might be the end if we do win the league um, which will be a sad day but um, ultimately and a lot of people have asked me this too what am I going to do for Football Manager 2014 save wise I've been so engrossed with this save and various other kind of projects that I've been doing with relation to Football Manager, I've simply not had time to think about it. So it's one of these things where I, I need to sit down and have a think and work out what I'm going to do. If you've got any suggestions, leave them down below. I, I had a load of people like saying, oh, please manage this team and this team and this team because I support them. Realistically, if I was to listen to every single of like my 4,000 subscribers' requests, like I'm never never going to please anyone, realistically. I might please one, in, one or two people who request the same team, but it's not going to happen. So what I'm asking for you guys to do, if you've watched it all this point, uh, leave me a team you'd like to see me manage, but if you could also... Tell me why you'd like to see me manage them. And I want it to be a reason, not necessarily just, oh, because I support them. Maybe because, oh, they've had this happen to them in their history. Or uh, because, um, I don't know, a, a reason that kind of makes that team slightly different to every other team that's being requested. I do need to work things out. Um, obviously, this year, I did the Pentagon Change and Road to Glory alongside each other. I think that was a mistake, not necessarily doing the saves, I have no regrets about starting either of them, but doing two long-term saves that lasted between them, uh, I mean, nine months for each, so, that, I mean, a lot of episodes, we're talking maybe 175, no, even more than that, maybe even 200 episodes combined of those two series, and so, I think this year, there'll be one long-term save, and then a lot of short-term saves, like the Crystal Palace save, like the Gambra Saka save that's going on at the moment, just 
you know, little supplements to run alongside a really long series. So if you have any suggestions for any teams, leave them down below. I'm now rambling, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.